Hey tubes. Hey, I want to show you something today. I uh, just picked this up off of eBay for 300 bucks. Uh, it's broken, but that's quite all right. I understand that because normally these, if they're working, they can start around 650, $700. If it's in fairly good shape and working, um, they'll go for around a thousand. If it's uh, semi calibrated and extremely reliable, uh, they can go anywhere from 1600 to 2000. So I thought I would take a gamble and pick this up for uh, 300 bucks. And that included the shipping too. Not too shabby, I didn't think. So I turned it on and I want to find out what's wrong with it. It did say that it was uh, broken and for parts only. So let's go ahead and start in the milliamp range here. And normally I would be using my milliamp range on this meter, my 8840. Uh, but uh, I just picked this up too and it, it was for parts and broken but some parts of it do work but it doesn't work on that so I'm going to use my little WaveTech uh, 27XT and uh, let's get down here to the milliamp range put this over to the milliamp and uh, we're gonna we're gonna play with this a little bit but before we do that I want to give you a quick rundown a little bit about the controls on these and what I like and don't like about it. Uh, this is the output function, whether you're going to be a positive scale or negative scale. Uh, zero, you can't program anything in here. It just, it, from what I understand, it just kind of basically shorts these out, puts out zero volts. And it's a DC calibrator, by the way, or reference, DC reference uh, um, calibrator. Zero is default positive, and when you go to uh, negative, it'll give you negative uh, voltage out, DC voltage. Like I said, it's a DC calibrator. So let's go back over here to zero for now, and let's go over here to the function of what it can do. It'll do 100 milliamps, 100 millivolts, 10 volts, 100 volts, and if you have the 1000 volt option, it'll give you that too. Um, if you don't have the 1000 volt option, it'll give you an error up here, and we'll see that because I don't have that. So let's start off with uh, what, what the ranges are here. 100 milliamp, you see it says milliamp. You got 100 millivolt, it says millivolt. Then you got 10 volt, and it's missing. That's one of the errors I found. 100 volt and that's missing and then since I don't have the thousand volt option this is totally expected right here uh, I don't know about if this is supposed to be here or this is supposed to be flashing in the background or not I can't see it with my eye but the camera picks it up really well this is this is dim see where these are flashing right here I can't see that with my eye but I can I can see it in the camera so let's go, so if any of you guys have one of these and know where these are supposed to be here, uh, viewing through a camera, let me know. All right, so let's go back over to the milliamp, 100 milliamp scale. And in order to get an output, you have to go either positive or negative. And I want to go positive. So we're going to go ahead and go to the 200 milliamp scale here. I'm in milliamps right here. And then I'm going to back off a little bit, and we're going to see which knobs work and which ones don't. So... This one does not appear to be working. What about this one? This one's not working. Makes me wonder if uh, the unit's working at all. Oh, oh, we got something here. And we got 20 milliamps out. Look at that. Okay, so we do have some functions. And this is a 100 milliamp scale, so it should be able to go up to 100. And there's 100. This is weird because earlier I was getting something. Oh, there we go. I was getting something. Makes me, makes me wonder if I have an intermittent wire or something in here. And this has uh, what's called the carry and a borrow. So I should be able to take all these numbers up. Now, if I go to the next one, this should go to zero, and this all these should carry over, and this should go to 100. Boom. So this is apparently working here. And if you go backwards, it should borrow. It should go back, and it does. And it should continually borrow back down like that. 
Okay, so what we want to do is to make sure that all the knobs are actually counting up and down like they should. And they appear to be this one. Oh, by the way, they're S201, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And this one appears to be working. So let's go down. Uh-oh, here we go. S205 is not working very well. It's intermittent. So the wipers inside are probably intermittent or uh, there's a bad chip and it's feeding the, the CPU incorrect information. All right, let's try this one, 204. It's one of the features I like about this is that, is that it will carry. Let's try this one. Go. and the maximum scale is a hundred so if I go to try to turn this one to get a hundred it won't do it and the reason it won't do it is because then it would be a hundred point nine milliamps and that's out of the range and the computer knows it so if I flip this one it should go to a hundred bingo there it is and I have my hundred over here and let's see if it'll give me any more nope that's it max scale so notice how it borrowed back down. That's pretty cool. It borrows up or it carries and borrows. Bingo. That's cool. So that's one of the, this is the one that's one of the ones that's intermittent. That's one of the things that uh, I like about it is that you don't have to set him all. You don't have to. Like if I want uh, 99, .99 uh, I can just go to get this to go to 100 and then hit this one down or this one down or this one down like that. One of the things I don't like about it though is that there isn't a operate or standby. So if I want to remove this voltage while I'm calibrating something, fix something, and then put it back, I have to go back in and redial it. I just can't hit an operator standby. So I don't like that. Now the other, op other option would be to actually just pull this so that the meter wouldn't read anything. And I don't particularly like that. That's one of the things I don't like about the unit. Uh, if you have a GPIB, which this unit does in the back, it does have that option. You can program that if you want and then turn it off and turn it on that way just by changing the values. That I kind of like. So let's see if we can get a uh, negative out of this. Let's see if it'll work in the negative. All right, so that seems to be working. So let's go nine here and see what we got. Or 10, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Okay, so that seems to be working. Let's see if we can get it to come up to 9 here. And then one more should take us to 100. Yep. Now, the, remember the positive was 99.5 and this one's negative 99.7 in the negative mode. So at least I know the negatives are working. So let's go back over to here. Let's change scales. Go up to the 100 millivolt. We're going to have to change this. And that is kind of one feature that I do like. Is that when you change modes, it automatically sets it to zero. So, let's say I wanted to go 100 volts or 100 milliamps. Or 100 milliamps or 100 millivolts. And I don't have my equipment set up right. Like it was over here when I changed. Uh, it will protect my equipment by automatically setting everything to zero. I like that and I don't like that. I like that because it protects the equipment. I don't like it because I would prefer to have an operate or a standby mode uh, switch over here. So let's see if we can't get anything out on millivolts. Let's, let's take this up to, uh, I, I'm just going to use 200 millivolts since the maximum scale on this is 100 millivolts. And let's see if we get anything. So we got one, but we don't have anything out. So apparently the millivolt range is working, but it's not giving us anything out. And I'm just over here wiggling these like this. 
Oh, oh, hey. Maybe I have some intermittent issues over here that I was unaware of. That's part of this. Like I said, it was broken when I got it. Let's see what we got. No, it's just all over the place. And this one doesn't work. Yep, nothing coming out of the millivolt range. All right, so let's go to the 10 volt range. Change this up to uh, 20 volts. You know what? Let's just go up to the top up here, up to this one. I know this one works over here. Uh, volts DC, and yeah, we're gonna go auto. Okay, so let's uh, start off with we're not going to actually see this on the meter up here. Because it's too many decimal points down. Might see this one though. Yeah, millivolts. That's 7.9 millivolts. This is 6 millivolts. I just went to, so it's it's not calibrated, which I pretty much expected, and it is changing. That says 40.9 40 millivolts, and we're at 39 millivolts. So I know this is off, or that's off, one of the two. All right, so obviously this is working. Can't get that to work. Let's see how many volts I can get out of this. Alright, that's right, this one doesn't work, so I have to use this one to go all the way up. So I'll have to fix that. Okay, and it should go up to 104 or something. I don't remember what it is. It's in the book. It says what it is. I don't remember. That's it. That's max scale. So we got 10.48575. And we got 10.48, 10.46. So it needs calibrating. Both of them do. <clears throat> so let's try the 100 volt scale. That's uh, two volts, and we are definitely not two volts. Got six volts here, <laughs> got 1.4 volts here. Let's change scales. Yeah, it's not working. So let's, let's see if maybe I have a ranging problem. And we'll come down here. Looks like it's trying to work in the 100 volt range, but it's not. <sighs> oh well. That's the zero. And the 1000 volt range obviously doesn't work. So anyways, it looks like I got a little bit of work to do. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you learned a little bit about this, uh, the way this uh, unit functions just by watching the video and how it counts up, counts down, and how to change uh, settings, what will happen when you change settings, and how to just put uh, supposedly zero out. I don't know if it'll do zero up here real quick, but we'll try. Nope. All right, well, God bless you all, and have a good night, and we'll catch you later. Keith Nunn, you out. Bye.